Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Shark Ion Robot Vacuum. Shark sent me the sample so I could tell you what I think of it. The robot uses an algorithm and sensors to map out your floors for vacuuming. To turn on the vacuum, besides manually pressing the clean button, you can use the Shark app or voice control. First, turn the robot over. There are two side brushes. Snap them onto the square peg and click into place. This is the self-cleaning brush roll. There should be no hair that rolls around the brush like in regular vacuum cleaners. The on-off button is on the side of the robot. Make sure it's turned on before charging. This is the charging dock. Put it on the floor with its back against the wall. The robot should be able to get to the dock without anything in its way. Plug in the charging adapter. The first time the robot should be charged for three hours for a full charge. I'm gonna press the dock button and see if the robot will go back to the charging station on its own to start charging. And it did. You heard the beeps. You can see the flashing LED lights and the robot is charging. One flashing light means low charge. One solid light means mid charge. Two lights means nearly full and three lights means fully charged. Three blue LED lights will cycle until charging is finished. When the cleaning cycle is finished or when the battery is low, the robot will find its way back to the charging station. Press the clean button to start cleaning and to stop. The dock button, press it to stop cleaning and send the robot back to the charging dock. The max button is used to increase cleaning power. It's a good idea for carpet. The shark comes with a startup guide. This is actually a piece of cardboard with all the instructions on it. Also comes with an instruction manual, tips and tricks for a great performance, and a page on how to use your robot near stairs. The dust cup is supposed to be larger than the last model. Press and hold the button down and insert fingers into the slot, pull the lid open. The filter should be cleaned every week and replaced every two months. Tap the filter to remove any dust. Use only water to rinse the filter. Make sure to let it air dry 24 hours before reinstalling. Insert the filter into the dustbin and slide the dustbin back into the robot. Two extra side brushes are included. This is the multi-surface pet tool, the crevice tool, and a brush tool. This is the cord-free handheld vacuum. The handheld's lithium-ion battery has to be charged before using. Put the handheld on the charging dock. During the first use, discharge fully to properly condition the battery. To fully charge the handheld, it'll take about two and a half hours. Both batteries are installed in the unit, in the handheld and the robot. There's nothing for you to install. Here's the on button. To release the dirt cup, just slide this button forward and you can release dirt right over your garbage. Slide forward and you can access the filter. Tap the dust cup filter screen to knock off any dust. Push this orange button. The dust cup can be hand washed with soap and water. Make sure you dry it fully before putting it back in the handheld. The accessories for the handheld simply slide in. Pull them out when you're done. This is the boundary strip. You can cut the strip with scissors to the length that you need. You're using this to keep the robot away from certain areas like pet bowls, power strips, or doorways. The strip should be completely flat against the floor. And you should place the strip at least two inches in front of the object you want to block off. There are three lights, so the battery is fully charged. I'm going to turn the vacuum on manually by pressing the clean button.
This is the actual volume of the robot. I have not turned down the volume. It's not very loud. You notice the robot vacuum does not vacuum in a straight line. It looks like it doesn't know what it's doing because it's going all over the place, zigzagging back and forth, straight line, no straight line. But the robot has many sensors and it figures out where to go and how to clean the floors effectively. If you want to try out this robot back, I put a link in the description below. My wool rug is thick and the shark climbed it with no issue. You can see the side brushes just literally swept the leaf that was on the rug to the middle and vacuumed it up. The transition from a hardwood floor to a rug or a carpet looks pretty smooth. The vacuum does get very close to the walls, but it won't be able to pick up every little bit of dust. When the robot gets stuck in a corner or a, a tight spot, it'll try to free itself by moving to the left, right, backward, forward, and most of the time it succeeds. One or two times I did have to pick up the vacuum and get it out of the spot that it was stuck in. There's a tight space between my dining chairs and the wall. The shark did get in there and make it all the way down to the end of my dining room, but then it got stuck so I had to help it along. Of course, it's a good idea to block off the tight spaces because you don't want to go chasing after the robot. I have fast forwarded some of the footage, otherwise this video would have been two hours long. I love that the robot got under my dining table where there's a lot of little particles. It got around the legs of my dining chairs and the feet of my dining table. It vacuumed up all the cereal. This rug is much thicker than regular carpet and the shark did a good job on cleaning it. I don't really see any dirt or particles on it. Let's just pick up some of the white particles on my dark kitchen floors. That's a little particle that was swept by the shark from underneath my dishwasher. And when it comes around again, it should pick it up. Found its way back just in time. So right before it lost the charge fully, um, I don't know if you heard, but there was a little beeping. I might have turned the camera off accidentally before that, but there was a little beeping so that um, you know the shark is about to die and it needs to be charged. And it did find its way back just in time. I charged the shark yesterday afternoon and used it today afternoon, so it was pretty much charged for 24 hours. It did have the three lights in around three hours, so it was fully charged. On that full charge, the shark ran for one hour and 30 minutes before it went back to the dock to charge itself. I went over the floors with my hands. The robot picked up just about all of the larger and smaller particles on my hardwood floors and in the rug. There's very little fine dust that was left on the floors. There was some fine dust that was left around the edges of the walls, the legs of my couch, end tables, coffee table, etc. You would have that same issue with most standard vacuums. My couch is about six inches off the floor and you saw the shark went under there without any issues and found its way out. And it's great that I don't have to vacuum under there or use a swiffer under there because the robot actually got all of the dust under there. My TV stand is about three and three quarters inch off the floor. And you saw the shark went under there too. There's a divider under there and if it wasn't for that, the shark could have cleaned the um, area under the stand completely. It did get stuck a little bit, but eventually found its way out. I put the black boundary strip between my living room and dining room floors.
You don't have to use the strips on stairs because the robot has cliff sensors that will prevent it from falling off any stairs or ledges. This is all from my rug. It's a wool rug. You can see there's a leaf in here, the cereal, another leaf, lots of dust. And you can see the filter's really dirty. So it got a lot of dust and dirt and particles and hair. Besides that one hair, there's uh, no more that got tangled and rolled around the brush, so that's a good thing. One less part to clean. I'll use the handheld to vacuum up everything that I just spilled from the cup. Everything's picked up. Use the Carvest tool to vacuum tight spaces. To use the app, click on Settings, search for the Shark Ion Robot app, touch Get, it's installing, touch Open, create your account with an email address and password, check your email for the confirmation code, copy and paste it in the Shark app. Agree to everything. The robot must be turned on. Press and hold the dock and max buttons on the robot at the same time for five seconds. It'll beep. The robot beeped. Now I'm going to open the Wi-Fi settings. Connect the robot to your Wi-Fi network. Choose your home network. I'm going to skip the product registration for now. Use the control screen to command your robot. You can also schedule a time for the robot to clean. There's a history page so you can view your robot's activity. You can choose quiet, normal, or max. I'm going to press clean. I'm going to press dock. So the app works. 
You can also see the battery life of the robot on the bottom of the screen. This is the Wi-Fi indicator. Blue means connected to Wi-Fi. Red means not connected. A flashing blue means setup mode. And no light means it's not set up. To clean, unplug, and turn off the vacuum, push up on these two tabs and lift off the door. Pull out the brush roll. The brush roll should be cleaned every week and replaced every 6 to 12 months, or when it looks like it's very worn. Take the cap off at the end of the brush roll, clean it off, and replace it. Pull the cap off the end. First, when you pull it, you're not going to think that this is going to be able to come off, but just use a little strength and it will come off. Put the brush roll back and close the door. Use a dry cloth to clean the sensors and charging pads. Clean the side brushes when you need to. They can be wiped with a damp cloth. Make sure to dry them completely before using. When they look worn, you can replace them. The caster wheel can be removed and cleaned. If you need to replace the battery, it's under this cover. The shark is very easy to use. Setup is easy. All you had to do was put the side brushes on and plug it in to charge the battery. Generally, robot vacuums aren't exactly a replacement for a standard vacuum, but since this shark comes with a handheld, it's very close to replacing a standard vacuum. I think this robot vac is better suited for people who have mostly hardwood floors. Although the shark did well on my wool rug, I don't think it's ideal for a house full of carpet. As you saw, the shark picked up dust, hair, leaves, and the cereal. It's very convenient. You can just turn it on and let it go. I thought the robot bag might get stuck under my couch or get completely lost, but it didn't. You saw that it found its way out from under the couch very easily. Shark does tell you to move stuff out of the way so the vacuum can work properly. But of course, we're not going to rearrange our whole house so the robot has space to vacuum. Basically, if you're messy and have tons of stuff on the floor lying around, then robot vacuums are not for you, or it might just force you to clean up before you vacuum, so that could be a good thing too. For a vacuum that cleans on its own without you having to do anything, I think the Shark did a good job. It's nice to be able to schedule the time you want the Shark to clean, the app wherever you are, which is convenient. So if you have a busy lifestyle and you just don't get the time to clean up as often as you would like, I think the Shark would work for you. If you want to try out this robot back, I've put a link in the description below. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.